So what we have today here is another kit from Banggood. Now this is the kit that's supposed to allow you to get going as cheap as possible and to give you everything you might need. They give you the controller, uh, which I'll get into in a bit. And what they also give you is a full-fledged goggle, which charges via micro USB, also have an AV input and diversity or probably dual antennas for your signal. And they even provide you the antennas, which is really nice, but there is no SD card expansion but you're expected to upgrade your goggle as soon as you can and if you do end up liking the hobby. However, let's get to the interesting part. So that's really nice. They give you everything you need to get going. You really don't need anything else except a power supply for this thing to charge the batteries. And I'll explain how to charge these batteries. So now for the quadcopter here, you will need to do a couple things to it in order to make sure you don't break it. And I'll get into that in a bit. But first, let's talk about the execution, the motors they're using, the propellers they give you, and its overall flight characteristics, and if it's efficient or not. Well, it checks the efficiency box quite good actually on 2S. I was getting really good flight time, four minutes, five minutes of flight time, which was really good actually. I was very happy to see that I was getting a lot more flight time. This is definitely way better than the novice one. Now, if you take a look at the upper plate here, now this is not carbon fiber, believe it or not. This is actually a PCB board designed with green LEDs. It looks so sick when this thing's on. It's just absolutely out of this world. And I'll show you that in a bit here. It does have a buzzer also built in, so you'll be able to easily find it. And I'll show you how to set that up because the setup, uh, the configuration of everything wasn't really the best in my opinion out of the box. And But the tune is great. So you don't have to worry about the tune, but you will have to modify the rates, which I'll show you uh, how to do that. And also how to set up your modes correctly uh, with this thing, just to, in order to give you the best overall experience. Now, as you can tell, what I've done here is I've zip tied the power connection right here because this is very loose and it'll get chopped off by a propeller. So I just zip tied it to just the bottom right there, bottom of the standoff. And that's really great because the battery power leads are very short. So they stay low like that tucked in and I didn't have any problems of that getting hit. However, here, what I've done is I've added a zip tie and then because the video transmitter's antenna is sticking out and then obviously the zip tie is broken now, but what I did was, is I also added a heat shrink around the video transmitter's antenna to hold it into place. But in one of the crashes, the zip tie just basically broke. I just need to refix that here. So that's also something you need to do. You're gonna have to secure your video transmitter, also your power leads, and that's about it on the quadcopter itself here. Now, the overall fitment and the execution of how to install the battery is actually really nice, very solid and very sturdy. So they're using these black TPU printed stuff and they're holding very well because you're going right into the standoffs. Also, something very important to take note of with this quadcopter is that you need to make sure you don't have any loose screws because that, that, that happened to me also in the field when I started getting it to, uh, you know, get jello in my feed and I was like, oh no, don't tell me. But it was like after the third flight and then I realized that my screws were loose so I just tightened them back up and they provide you with the hardware you need to tighten these screws which is also really great. So as you can tell the battery fitment is absolutely superb here. I really like that. 
But unfortunately, they went with these type of connectors. But the reason why they've done that is because you could run a 1S and a 2S. But I highly recommend you run a 2S. So you're supposed to put two batteries together. 1S battery, you know, if you're going to run it 1S, this is not really um, stable. Maybe for indoor flight, it's okay. But it's meant to be flown on a 2S, really. That's where you get the most flight time. It's really fun to fly it on 2S. Um, the, the batteries you give you are proper. What's really nice with these motors is even the cheapest, shittiest batteries will work absolutely great and give you great flight time. That is something so nice and so attractive about this class. And to be honest, they've executed the quadcopter absolutely insane. Uh, the flight characteristics, just everything about it. The only thing that was slightly hindering my performance was the controller but i'll also show you a way to set up the rates in order to have this fly pretty proper where you can actually hit gaps because before i didn't have this set up correctly and out of the box it is not set up correctly uh in order for you to do some really nice proximity flying which again i'll show you in a bit now for the video transmitter they're using an absolute beast of a transmitter it's the Yashin diamond vtx it's my favorite one of my favorite uh, micro slash toothpick video transmitters. It's really great, especially uh, in the areas that I fly, which uh, kind of dictate, tell me if a video transmitter is actually outputting its correct power. So it's really nice. It has smart audio, which means you can change the channels to the on-screen display, which is a huge addition. They're using a crazy B board. I don't know which one exactly, but it's handling itself just fine. And the radio transmitter is already built in. It's actually an FR Sky. So if you had an FR Sky controller, you could just bind this right to your FR Sky. Now, if you have an access version, it's running D8. So you're going to need a multi protocol module so keep that in mind right there uh, so that's going to conclude it right now for the quadcopter the flight characteristics was great the tune was great and again we're going to go back into beta flight in a bit just to show you the extra configurations we need to do for the rates and also the modes in order to have everything work properly for example the buzzer is not really uh, configured to be used but you will definitely need this especially if you crash and also a couple more mods so you don't you know ruin it right out of the box let's talk about the batteries a bit because maybe some people don't know how to charge these batteries so logically speaking there's two versions of this the two batteries or something which is 155 and 175 you get the one with all of these batteries and that's just 20 dollars more i highly recommend you just do that it's way better for you um so basically what you have especially if you're running 2s so here's considered one battery two battery, three battery, four battery, five battery. This will get you flying for roughly 30 minutes plus. I mean, with the break. So if you had like a 40 minute break, um, you know, to go fly, uh, I think these would last you those flights. Obviously, you're going to crash. You're going to have to go pick it up, change the propeller here and there. So, you know, the flight time is above three minutes, which is really great. So it's anywhere between four and six minutes, depending on how you fly. Most of the time I got four and a half to five minutes, which I was really happy about. And the batteries don't come hot. Neither do the motors come hot, which is a really, really good thing, especially for a kit like this. Now, another thing you need to take into consideration here is the charger. It's not set up correctly out of the box, actually. So you're going to have to modify this. Now, what you want to put here is something like a 12 volt adapter that you could find, you know, um, around your house. Usually anything that would fit here that's 12 volts will be able to charge everything here. Or if you have some sort of an XT60 battery, you could plug that in. I don't know what is what's the maximum on this, but I don't think you, I'd want to probably put a 6S in here. Um, but yeah, just check the documentation because I really don't know on this one. And I usually either just put 4S or just some sort of adapter here. The USB here is an output, so it charges something uh, USB. So you could actually charge this thing and the batteries at the same time. So what you want to do first, because these are HV batteries, and it's very important to take note of that. Uh, so an HV battery uh, full charge is 4.3 volts. And as you can tell, all of them are switched to 4.2 volts. And that's not what we want because these are HVs. So what you want to do is you want to flip all these to the up position, and that makes it charge HV batteries. It's very important you do that, or you won't get the full flight time um, out of these batteries, and you won't charge them to their full capacity. Also, another thing to take note of here is the charging current. Now, if it's too slow for you, it's currently set to 0.2 of an amp. And if you wanted to charge it a little bit faster, you can go up to uh, 0.6 amps, so 600 milliamps. And all you'd have to do is switch those to the right right here. But I highly recommend you keep them on 0.2, which is 200 milliamps. But I never have patience, and I just usually just charge them on full blast so all the all everything is to the up position on the voltage part and on the charging current part everything is to the right which is the fastest way to charge and um, that's what you need to do make sure you set that up as soon as you get it so you're charging your batteries correctly now if you don't charge them correctly nothing bad's going to happen you're just going to have less flight time so keep that in mind
All right, let's put these to the side. Now we're going to get into the controller. So the controller, I have reviewed this controller before on the ESG Novice one. They're using the same exact controller. However, what I want to show you is how to set it up correctly. And we're going to get into the beta fly right now. So the only problem with this controller is the dead zone right here. So, you know, if you're trying to do just really tiny adjustments, it doesn't move. And the way they've also have it configured, which makes it even worse, that once it connects and you just go a little bit more than you expect, then all of a sudden it just goes really fast. It does that turn really fast. It flips, it goes all weird. So you have to lower those rates, you know, the sensitivity basically. And the way you use this is this is going to be for arming and this is going to be for the mode. So for example, to boot this up, never touch this because this is the bind button. So to boot this up, you want to hold this. And that's booted. Now, if this was constantly beeping, I'm going to show you something real quick. So if my throttle was up here and then I boot it, it'll keep beeping. If you could hear that, that beeping just means basically put your throttle down and then that'll go away. Now to arm it, you would have to, you know, do that twice the way that I'm going to show you how to set it up. You would do this twice because if you press it once, I have this to be the buzzer. Again, it would arm. That's how I'm going to show you how to set it up, which is better because the buzzer is originally not configured to be used. And here, what, if you don't touch it, it's an angle mode, which is stable mode, uh, which is not really hard. It just stabilizes itself automatically. And if you click it once or twice, it just goes into acro. Uh, so that's the way we're going to set it up right now. And I think I found it to be the best. So out of default, you just, you know, you arm it like that. You're good to go. You start flying. You crash. Uh, that's if you don't go into a acro mode and you just Press that again, one, make it green and the buzzer will go off and I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and jump into beta flight. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna actually connect the micro USB into the bottom and make sure you open up beta flight like we have here. Next thing, find your correct COM port. I know mine's on 15. If you don't know which one's yours, keep trying whatever you have until it works. Next, we wanna go ahead and click connect. Then the first thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to configuration tab here on the left. So once we go into configuration, uh, motor stop is on. That means when it's armed, the motors don't spin. However, um, I highly recommend you turn that off. It's just much better. So I turned mine off right there and I recommend you do that also. So once you turn off motor stop, then you wanna go ahead and move down all the way to air mode. Make sure you turn this on. And the reason why we turn this on is for example, if you let go of the throttle, then the quadcopter will start falling like that. Until you give it throttle again, then it'll pick itself back up. But if you have air mode on, it'll drop the speed of the propellers. However, if it starts deviating, then it'll just fix itself. So you always want that. It's actually very useful for, especially if you're new, it really does help quite a lot. Everything else you could leave default here. So that's very important. Also save and reboot is very important. So after you do those two changes, save and reboot, then we want to go ahead and go back into connect. Then we want to go to the PID tuning. We're not going to do any PID tuning, but we need to fix our rates, which is this right here. Now, if you take a look at that, I've set mine 54, I found to be the best value. And here we have the exposed 0.10. So 54, 54, 54, that's all you need to change here. And if you ever screw these up, just come back and watch my video. So 54 flies great, especially with the controller here. So I really recommend you do it like that. And then you could save. And um, after that's saved, then we want to go into the modes tab right here. So this is what you want to do. You want to go to the arm and make sure it's on auxiliary one. So and again, this is auxiliary one right here. Now check this out. Look at this little orange thing when I press this button. As you can tell, it went in the middle. Uh, that's the buzzer, which I'll show you how to change in a bit. So right here is the buzzer. It's down there. We'll show you where it went. And as you can tell, now it's armed here. So I have it on the when it's both of these initializes it arms. So and again, so here's the orange part. Here's the buzzer, which was down there. And then this is arm. So right now we've armed the quadcopter and it would actually start flying. So let's disarm this angle mode. I have it as default because obviously as default, these are off. So in angle mode, which is a stable mode, um, it's immediately just already in angle mode. But if you want to go into acro, then you just click it once. You know, if any of the lights are on, then you're in um, you're in basically acro mode, which is kind of like manual mode or advanced mode, if you want to say. So we're going to keep it in angle mode here. And as you can tell, it's on auxiliary two. Now the beeper here, I've set on auxiliary one and I've set it right in the middle right here. But you want to kind of move it down just a little bit off the middle, just like that, because when you plug in the USB, it's going to be right here without this being on and it'll just keep the buzzer always running. So if you set it up like this on auxiliary one, you're going to be fine. Like I have here, so as you can tell right there. 
So, and then here, obviously it was something else. And that's basically it, that's all I did right here. And like that, you should have a functioning quadcopter that just works perfect. I mean, it works really, really great, uh, especially with the rates. The rates are very important and also the small modifications that you're gonna have to do to uh, make sure that your power doesn't get disconnected or cut your, one of these wires and your video transmitter's antenna. You really have to look into it. And as you can tell, look at the sick LEDs right here. This is, it just looks so nice in real life, it looks so awesome. But in the sunlight, it doesn't really help finding it, but at nighttime, it looks pretty sick. And well, that's it guys. I'll have everything linked down below. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Come join my Patreon. I'll have this up for a giveaway and a ton more premium pre-built quadcopters and quadcopters that I've built on the channel. And um, I really hope this video was useful to someone and or helped someone. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.